Before I begin, I want to clarify that in this post, I won't be talking about basics of API design and operations such as post, put, get and delete. This is more about informing about the scope and approach to API design when asked during an interview. Sometimes in fan companies, instead of system design question, you will be asked to design an API from scratch. Now, generally speaking, API design is sometimes a subset of system design interview, but it can be very well be an interview round of its own. Now, if you think about any software based product or service, you will quick to realize that there is an API for that product or service. Be it YouTube, Twitter, Amazon, Facebook, they all have APIs. Without an API, you cannot really interact with the service or functionality. For instance, if you want to sell something on your website, you won't be building that entire functionality yourself. There are products like Stripe or PayPal, which provide payment processing solution for large and small businesses. It is their API that enables their products or businesses to process payments. Now, once you build an API and release it to the users, there's a sense of stability or permanence to it because there may be external or internal customers or perhaps engineers in your company consuming your API and relying on it for their operations. Now, as soon as that happens, that is as soon as you release your API, making changes to the API became difficult than ever, which is why designing your API becomes so important. Even the simplest of details like name of parameters in the endpoint or the ordering of parameters, all these minor details become extremely important because making any changes will have big consequences for your clients. That is why big tech companies like Google, for example, they have a rigorous design process whenever they design a new API. They pretty much get it reviewed by several engineers who challenge the API design. To understand it better, let's take an example of Twitter. Let's say you have been asked to design Twitter API. Now, the first thing you should be doing is asking clarifying questions. The thing you need to ask is what part of Twitter are we designing? What functionalities we want to support? That is, is it only for the landing page or homepage or is it for the trending tab? And who exactly will be consuming your API? Once you have clarified the functional requirements, you can probably then talk about system requirements such as the scale of system, the number of users, who will be interacting with your API or consuming your API and from what regions the user will be consuming your API and, and what kind of data exchange, what payload is going between the API. All those things you can probably touch during your system requirements. Because without this info, you can't really design API. And once you got all this information, you can jump into your actual solution. So here you are likely be writing out the various entities the API relies on. That is, for example, for a Twitter API, you will probably come up with a tweet resource or entity, a user entity, and what these resources look like and what properties or attributes these resources are having. And once you have all that, you would write an outline of the various APIs you can think of and what various parameters and responses you can think of during the API design. But again, you won't be implementing the API. You won't be writing logic for implementation of the API. You are just outlining the API design with parameters, entities, resources. Now, so long you can explain or defend your solution, there is no right and wrong answer when you're designing an API. But it's really important that you're open to the feedback of your interviewer. Just as if you would be designing an API if you are in Google. You would be open to any constructive criticism, try to have a conversation, and if needed, make necessary changes to your API. One of the exercises you can do is to attempt yourself designing an API for a big tech company such as Twitter, and then go through their API page and see if you find any similarities, what you missed, and so on and so forth. So as an example, here I have an API reference of Twitter Timelines API. You can probably attempt to design it yourself and then come over here and see what kind of information you missed. For example, this is a GET request and this is how it looks like. You can then scroll down and check all the query parameters and the path parameters and cross check what kind of parameters Twitter is expecting here. And then you can probably scroll down further and check the sample response fields Twitter is returning and, and question yourself why, why is that the case and what you could have done better when designing the API. Of course, having a basic understanding of APIs is fundamental before you even attempt to API design. In addition, you should be also aware of the best practices in the industry when it comes to API design. What are the basic principles or the core principles engineers generally apply when designing their APIs? And that is something I would be covering in my future topics.